There is a really good reason why Skahoy leads the market in universal PTC controllers. Most importantly, it's because we deliver precise control for any brand of camera, mixed any way you need. We have also invented cruise control and PTC trace across all cameras we support, and even more, we can combine cameras, sliders, and pedestals into one unified control experience. Today we'll control this Panasonic UE150 camera mounted on a pedestal as if it were a single device. And that's incredibly unique, especially when you're comparing it to existing solutions on the market. This is a PTC Extreme. This is our flagship PTC controller. And one of the unique things about it is that it has a joystick, which is not just pan, tilt, and zoom on the rotation. It also has a zoom rocker. And uh, typically, it will ship with the zoom rocker and the rotation, both doing zoom on the camera that you are controlling. But today, we have made the zoom rocker into adjustment for the pedestal of the Panasonic camera. So there you see it in action already. Now, the cool thing is, if I use the joystick, you get that combined control where you can see now the camera is actually moving around um, as if it was one device. So from the operator's point of view, this PTC Extreme selecting this camera now does these two things, even though it's mechanically separate, Devices, they have two Ethernet jacks, they are set up inside of Reactor, the software that runs on the PTC Extreme, as two different devices. Okay, so uh, normally a PTC Extreme has a camera selector here, presets here. This is a menu for all the settings you can adjust on the encoders. And one of the things that are special for this configuration is the pedestal menu, which is added, giving us access to features related to how the pedestal combination with the camera is uh, working out. And we'll explore that in a moment. But I also started out the video saying that we control any brand of camera. And here we have a Canon camera. So I want to uh, show you that we could also add this camera, Canon camera to uh, the presentation today. So I'll just search up for Canon Sia in 100 camera here and uh, set its IP address up real quick like that. And we'll now see this camera is connected. And uh, inside the camera selector, I'll just quickly select the um, Canon PTC Pro class configuration here. So as I have done that, and I'll come back to this in a, in a second, notice what happens when I use the camera selector. I'm changing over to the Canon camera. And now you'll see that this is the camera that I'm actually operating in terms of pan, tilt. I can do preset recalls on this camera. And if I change over here, what do you think is happening now? Now I'm back to working with the uh, Panasonic camera. Okay, so that was really, really easy to mix in the, the Canon camera and we can go between these two in this way. Let's explore the pedestal functionality, okay? Uh, apart from having pan, having tilt, being able to, uh, let me see, um, uh, yeah, operate the, <laughs> the, uh, the pedestal, of course, I can also recall presets, all right? So just see what happens here. I'm recalling a preset there. You see both the pedestal and the camera goes into position. And now I recall a different preset. We see the camera just slightly tilted a little bit. And now the pedestal is rising up um, because both things are recorded inside of this preset. And that's another really cool thing. Again, it is supporting the claim that this is a unified experience for the user. He doesn't have to know that these are separate pieces of hardware. Let's take a look at um, the output from the camera. Now you can see that of course I can do adjustments with the joystick here. And I could also, as I do so, I could also start moving the, the pedestal. So to just make a nice vertical slider action, if you will. Whether you actually want to do this on a live shot or not depends on you, probably what, how much training you are putting into using the joystick here. But I like this shot and I want to record it as a preset number three. So I'm just pressing that button for like a second. It lights up green. I have recorded the preset. And now if I press two, you see that it's going back to the preset we were at before. And now pressing three, it will record the preset that I just made. Okay. In the pedestal menu, we find the pedestal speed is adjustable here. Normally you have joystick speed for pan, tilt, zoom. Here we have pedestal speed. Now I'm gonna press the zoom rocker as much as I can. You can see it's slowly moving. If I'm moving the speed up, you see it increases its speed, okay? So that is simply the speed of the pedestal. Now, the, uh, the other thing we have is a pedestal curve. And the curve is whether the zoom rocker will 
give you a linear movement or, or linear speed to the pedestal. So if I put the curve to its max and having that max speed, it means that it will still start out pretty slowly if I just move the zoom rug a little bit and then it will accelerate to its full speed. If I put the curve back to uh, like basically zero, then I will have a little quicker movement from the very beginning as I'm moving the zoom rocker. So just tiny adjustments on the zoom rocker will actually have a higher speed. So the curve is kind of how smooth is the operation, the speed operation going to start. We have also limits we can set. So let's say this is uh, just um, adjust it to, let's say, this position, all right? That is the maximum we want to do. So if I just rotate this, you'll see that it's setting an upper limit now. I'll just go in the other direction and then we'll set a lower limit. We could put that lower limit right there. And we'll now set the lower limit for the pedestal. And it takes a little while for, oh, I need to turn it the other way, okay. Now, uh, let's just try to uh, move it as quickly as I can up and you'll see that it has a limit of how far it will go. It stops right there and if we go the other way, it will also stop where we put the limit in this direction. The final thing that you can set, it's really basic here or easy, is whether the tilt of the camera is actually tilt of the camera. It turns out to be, but I can also turn out the tilt direction of the joystick to be the pedestal. What does that mean? It means as I'm now moving the joystick in this direction, it is adjusting the pedestal movement, right? So uh, I'll probably just keep that at tilt. I can do the same for the zoom. So as I'm now rotating, you'll also see that I am basically adjusting the height of the pedestal. The last one is the zoom rocker, whether you want that to be pedestal or camera zoom. So now that we are at camera zoom on this one, we are actually zooming with the zoom rocker and I could have this one being the pedestal. So now as I'm rotating the joystick, I am actually moving the pedestal up and down. So that's really easy, all put into the pedestal menu. We have system, PTC control, image exposure, home. Those menus are full of settings, as you already know. And the way this is done inside of Reactor, because if you know how you control your Panasonic cameras already on your PTC Extreme. You'll know that this pedestal menu is not there and it still is not there if you use the uh, the standard configuration that we have for the Panapod pedestal of for the Panasonic cameras. So actually the, the difference you see right here is that normally you're running on this configuration that says Panasonic PTC generic. And if I choose that, the pedestal menu will disappear because we put that into like a copy of that configuration, but where we added that extra menu. In other words, you just choose this one. And as we are now going here, you see that menu is actually gone. And now I can also search by this one and just picking this one, selecting the camera once again, pedestal menu is there. So this is how easy it is to, to have multiple cameras, even multiple Panasonic cameras, only having the pedestal menu on the camera that supports it. Before we end the video, let's take a quick glance at Reactor. Again, the UI that runs the PTC Extreme, this is where you set up your cameras. And before I started this video, I already set up two devices. I had the UE150 added. It has this IP address. It's called ID or device ID number one. The other one is the Panapod, and that is on another IP address having device ID number two. Normally those device IDs would represent individual cameras. And this is also how it's controlled on other controllers. It's not that our controller is the only one that can control this one, but what would normally happen is that you have to select your Panapod as a camera number like camera two. And then when you adjust the Panapod with that PTC controller, you only adjust the Panapod. You can't control camera number one, which is the one on top. We combined those two, and this is what's happening inside the camera selector on that very first line. You have to enable show advanced, but the moment you do, you'll see that we have this called a combo device ID, and that's like a secondary ID that indicates which additional device from that same device call, which is the driver that talks the Panasonic language, which secondary device is involved in this configuration. So the first one device ID is the camera and that correlates with that one up there. The second one, that number two is actually referring to the Panapod. And this is how you could have multiple Panapods on your set. Say three Panapods, you could have three Panasonic cameras and you would have three integrated devices here. They would all have IDs like one, two, three, four, five, six, 
but it would be sorted out inside of this table, the settings table here, where you can identify the primary and secondary device IDs for each. What about the Canon camera? As I told you, it is already and showed you, it's added over here. Because it's Canon, we can have a uh, device ID number one for the Canon camera, and that's all fine. It's down here. It's kind of just standard issue PTC control, adding that as a second camera on the controller in this case. So you get one combined user experience. You get control and preset for pan, tilt, zoom, focus, and elevation. And that's perfect for live movement or preset shots. Like, for instance, adjusting the right height of a talking head on a show. If this inspired you, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on social media as well, and you can subscribe to our newsletter for updates. And the links to all that you'll find in the description below. And whenever you need to connect with us, don't hesitate to reach out to our sales and support team.